Hey, welcome back to Tech Pastry. This is the second part of a multi-part coding series where I create a stock options alerting bot. And what this bot does is it takes stock option data and prices it using the Black-Scholes model, which is a very popular option pricing model. And it will alert the user, me or somebody else, when an option goes above or below the model price. And if you haven't done so already, or this is your first time on my channel, I'm Tech Pastry, I'm a software engineer in New York working on one of the fan companies and I create videos about tech, living in New York, personal finance and life advice. So thanks for checking me out, hit subscribe and smash that like button. It feeds the YouTube algorithm and it helps recommend my video to more people that might like it. So thanks for joining me and we're jumping back in and what we have already made in the previous video is a framework for getting option data and I've made a couple minor modifications. I created a spot price which is the current price of the underlying asset. So like in this case we grabbed option data for Microsoft and we are going to um, we are going to create the computation for the Black-Scholes model and if you don't know what Black-Scholes is um, it is a option pricing model that was invented in 1973 and it basically takes a formula for calculating the price of a call option and it takes a D1 which is um, sorry the cumulative distribution of D1 multiplied by the, the spot price minus the cumulative distribution of D2 multiplied by the strike price times in, uh, the natural uh, the Euler coefficient to the power of the negative uh, negative of the risk-free interest rate times T and what we're gonna calculate this using code using the multiple parameters that get passed in we are going to do this bit from the previous data that we got from Y finance and we already are able to get the options array which is the array of call input options. So we, from here, we are going to call Black Shoals, which is a function that we are going to create. We don't have it yet, and we're going to write it over here, which is Black Shoals, and we need to take a spot price, which is a float, a strike price, which is a float, a uh, expiration date, which is a string and an implied volatility, which is a float. So what we'll return from here is a price of the option. So just to give, if this is your first time joining me on this video series, I'm going to show you what is currently getting printed out for the call and the put options. Um, and we are just gonna run our program to see what is printing out. So it's grabbing data from Y Finance, which is causing a little bit of a network delay, but we can see that we are getting the call options from Microsoft with implied volatility, the strike, the bid, the ask, the ticker, expiration date, and the spot price, which is the current price on the market. So we can go ahead and pass that into Black Shoals. And first of all, we need to get the D1 of this function, um, which is the Black Shoals model. And D1 is a natural log of the, the spot price divided by the strike price plus the risk free interest rate, which in this case, we're going to use the London interchange bank rate. Alternatively, we can use the treasury, uh, tre the treasury interest rate for T bills. And then we take the implied volatility square divided by two, multiplied by the time horizon, divided by the, uh, the implied volatility times the square root of the time horizon. So let's go ahead and code that. And I'm going to move this over here so I can read off the formula to code it. So we're going to use NumPy and we're going to use NumPy.log, which is a natural log. And we're going to take the spot price divided by the strike price. And then next, we're going to take the risk-free interest rate, which in this case, we're going to use LIBOR. And that is currently 
5.37 for the th uh, one year risk-free interest rate. So let's code that and make it a um, 0 0.0537 and then continue coding our Black-Scholes model, which is now we're taking the implied volatility to the power of two divided by uh, two and I'm gonna wrap this and then multiply it by the time horizon which in this case the time horizon is going to be the um, expiration date which we already pass into the function here and then we're gonna parse it into a Python object and then subtract it from now and that way we'll get the time delta and we're gonna return that as days. So now that we have the time horizon, we also need to take D1 and div uh, divide it by the implied volatility, multiply it by the, the square root of the time horizon. So now that we have D1, now we can calculate D2 using D1, which D2 is now D1 minus implied volatility multiplied by the square root of the time horizon. So uh, to test this out, um, we can print what D1 is and then we can print what D2 is. And let's go ahead and run this to make sure that it's working. So you can see D1 and D2 are correct. Um, now we have D1 and D2, then we can return the cumulative distribution, which is cum sum in NumPy, and then we can take the D1 value multiplied by the spot price, which we pass in as a parameter, and then we can also subtract that by the cumulative distribution of D2 multiplied by the strike price uh, times math dot e uh, to the power of the risk-free interest which is um, 5.37 percent multiplied by the time horizon. So now that we have this we can just run a, run a check to make sure that our price is correct. And I ran it using the uh, the replit. Um, so let's just make sure that this is working. And it looks like there might be a issue. So we're running in, into an issue with the invalid value encountered in subtract. So let's just break this up to make sure that we are getting the um, make sure we're getting both part of both parts of the um, equation, so we can break down where our issue might be, so we can debug it. So from here, we calculated the price. We will have to do some verification to make sure our pricing is accurate. Um, since we're doing math equations, there is a high, chance, high likelihood of errors. Um, so these numbers look a little bit off. They don't look quite right. So let's go ahead and print out the debug logic. So now let's just double check to make sure that everything looks correct.
So now that we verified Black Scholes, um, what we ended up changing was changing if the time horizon was arbitrarily low, we would set it to an arbitrarily low value. So if the call was a zero day to expiry call, which means that there are no more days before it expires, then we set the the denominator to a very small value instead of setting it to zero, which causes it to go infinity. We also heart changed implied volatility to not be the volatility that's passing through wide finance because that's an implied volatility of the, um, the call option that we are passed in. So that's just to verify that these call options are not like ridiculously high. We also used a different cumulative normal distribution from scikit instead of using the one from numpy. So let's pass in the implied volatility. This is the one that Y Finance is calculating their option price from. And um, let's go ahead and get these prices. So now for a option that is expiring, that is striking at 330, and the current spot price is 220 with an implied volatility of 81%, then the price for the option is $216, which is going to be a, um, it's going to be overpriced. So now that we have this Black Scholes model calculated, we can go ahead and use this for are alerting. And with that, that's the end of part two of this video. If you like this video and you want to see part three, which is creating the email alerting and sending, make sure you subscribe and give this video a like. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time. Peace.